Good evening, you two pipe smokers. Another night drive video. Just leaving work. It's been something of a hectic week with the snow. The snow makes life interesting when you're in the repair business. And you have like 15 to 20 cars to clear off. You got You got to clean them off, move them, plow where they were, put them back. And you have to do that twice because it snowed twice. First we got dumped with five inches, and then, so you have to clean off initially. Then we got blasted another five inches overnight, so now you, you got to clean up again. not complaining, that's just life in the repair business. When you own your own business, these are the little things that, you know, you never dream of when you have this envision of opening your own shop. You don't think about the snowstorms and the... weather and all the things that interfere with your daily operation. And then you can't get parts because the parts places aren't running because of the snow. And you can't get your UPS delivery because wherever the parts are coming from, the snow is worse than it was in your area. And this snow was a two-day event, basically. So you, you spend a good day and a half cleaning up, another day waiting for parts, and everything backs up. So the rest of the week you're playing catch up, and then you gotta try to explain to customers that um, they're not having a car when you originally said because You didn't get the parts and they don't understand and this time of year people got shopping to do and everybody's like stressed so it just makes for interesting interesting times but it does take its toll on you it's added pressure that you really could do without But that's the way it goes. Can't change the weather. Anyway, I hope most of you are having a good week. I hope all of you are having a good week. I'm sure everybody else got stress in their life too. I'm not the only one. Got my BRTV mug. Thank you, Phil. I really enjoyed doing that video for BRTV. Uh, gonna, I'm going to try to do a series, uh, Spotlight a Pipe. Uh, I'm going to make a bunch of them, and then when Phil sees fit, he'll upload them if he has a spot to fill or something like that. And that's what this video is about, really. Uh, every one of you, think about something you can come up with, present the idea to Phil. And um, and he'll possibly upload it when he has a spot to fill or when the server, you know, when it can handle it. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. And the way you do it is you do a YouTube video, you make it private, and you send uh, Phil the link, a prior report. And... Um, if he can fit it in, he gets a chance, and and, and he doesn't re-edit the video. Uh, you too can be on BRTV and support the cause, which I think is a good one. Um, 
and hopefully it's a backup plan should we lose YouTube that will be in place and established and uh, if something should happen and we can't have YouTube at least we'll have a, a source of communicating as the community is used to. And if it never happens, well then there's another uh, avenue for um, pipe information. I mean the Briar Report really, if, if um, first of all let me say this, if you've ever tried to create content for online, even like YouTube videos, and I said this many, many times, the reason I came up with the Daily Five is because there's no way I could constantly think up on a regular basis of content to upload. So the Daily Five gave me a, a, an avenue to do consistent videos. And I sort of have a fan base, a lot of people like the Daily Five. Um, and I'll tell you an interesting story that happened because of it. A, a week or about two weeks ago now, I get a phone call. And it was a local number because I have caller ID. And the fella says, this is going to sound like a weird phone call, but bear with me. And I did, and I listened. And he said, I see your videos every morning, and I like them. And I'm part of a pipe club local, and we have our Christmas party coming up. And we'd like, I'd like you to join. And he sent me the information. And it's December 14th, which I'm going to try to make. They have sort of a pipe show uh, type of, they have tables, I guess, where members sell pipes and stuff like that. And they have giveaways and all this type of thing. And it's really local. It's only like um, five miles from me. And uh, it was really a nice conversation we had. And um, I'm going to go, I think, next, I think it's next weekend, the 14th. I probably can't go for long. It's a Saturday, but in the afternoon I can sneak out and get up there for a couple hours. Um, but it all happened because of the YouTube video, um, which is nice. So, anybody in, that watches my channel, if and it's not always pipe related, um, but if you're thinking about doing a video, don't hold back. Come up with something of your own. Just be original, be yourself, and post videos. And it's a really rewarding experience. It really is. And um, you develop a fan base, a friendship, uh, with a lot of people You'd be surprised all the good that comes out of it I mean it was so nice to go when I went to the Vegas pipe show to Meet people that you only communicate on YouTube with And it's like you know these people for years I mean when I met Mel the garbage man Piper at the pipe show it was it was like I met an old friend I haven't seen since school or something like that. Very pleasant experience. I would not experience that. I would have went to that pipe show had I not been doing YouTube videos and not know anybody there. And to see, I met four YouTube presenters in a matter of 15 minutes. Now, when you stop and think about that, that's pretty amazing. And I've been only doing YouTube videos a little bit over a year. And to have four people that recognize you from your YouTube videos, I got to tell you, you, and this may sound corny, but you almost feel like somewhat of a celebrity. 
and I'm just a nobody that makes videos, nothing extravagant, but yet recognizable enough for people to call out your name. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you in person. It's words cannot do it justice how it feels, and it's really nice. And I'm so glad I made, started to make YouTube videos. I really am. It really has helped me tremendously in life in general for a lot of reasons. Uh, it made me overcome a lot of fears of how I look and how I sound and being self-conscious. And it came to a point where um, another presenter, Phil, Posted a video about eight months ago, no, over a year ago, and said, "If you're thinking about doing videos, just do it, and it's rewarding." And he was right, and I'm glad I listened to him. We all have a story to tell. We we all are interesting in some portion of our life. That nice to have somewhat of a. I don't want to sound corny or like a legacy, but it, it just, it's really nice to be part of something. Especially in today's world where we're not, where we basically a lot of us communicate through social media and because of life gets in the way, you don't have time to meet people in person or, you know, something like years ago when I was a kid, even the families used to come over to the house on Sunday for Sunday dinner. Uh, my father always had a friend come over and they're talking about fixing TVs or the latest TV that's out, the problems or working on a car problem or a lot of that's gone. Like our neighborhoods we live in. I live in a neighborhood, I don't know the next door neighbor. Because everybody's doing their thing. They're out working or... I know them to wave at them. I know the guy, how he looks. But I haven't spoken any words to them. Because we're not... Nobody's in that kind of... Um, it's not the, the world like it was when I grew up. When I grew up in the Bronx, I knew everybody on that block. In the summer, everybody was out. Everybody was like in a conversation with one another. Um, to this day, I can remember every person in every house on both sides of the street, up and down my neighborhood. And for a two or three blocks over, so it really shows you how the society has changed. Now, I'm sure in some parts of America, neighborhoods like that might still exist, but I think a lot of it's gone because of, maybe because of the phone. I think it's a lot because life has gotten more hectic. It's a little more stressful. Yeah, everybody's busy making money or saving money or, or working two jobs or they just don't have time to socialize face to face and you see it all over you see it when you go to the mall you see a husband sitting outside waiting for his wife to come out of the store and he's looking at his phone You see it in restaurants, four people sitting at a table and four of the people are looking at the phone. And I think I gave this statistic in one of my early morning uh, <clears throat> The Daily Five. Online sales for Black Friday was $7.9 billion 
and almost three billion was done on the cell phone. And that's pretty amazing statistic when you stop and think. Three billion dollars in sales was done on a cell phone. Not a laptop, not a tablet, a phone. And that's up a billion dollars from last year. So anyway, I urge everyone to check out Briar Report TV. If you want to do videos, stop thinking about it and do it. And if you want to be part of BRTV, reach out to Phil on the public access channel and support BRTV, support pipe smoking, support pipe smoking uh, online stores, your local brick and mortar, if you're lucky enough to have a pipe shop in your area. Because by supporting them, it, it, it will keep them around and keep a hobby that we all love alive. So with that, I hope you're having a good week, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday, and I hope you have a great week going forward. And I hope the weather is favorable in your area. And be careful out there when you go shopping. Don't be complacent. There's a lot of bad people out there. Be alert. And don't take anything for granted, especially this time of year. With that, I'm going to sign off and wish you all a good night. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.